Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I want to thank God so much for this opportunity to share the word of God. And I'm very excited to share the word of God this day. Uh, I want us to pray. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time. We thank you for this day. We thank you because you are a great God. There is none like you. Holy is your name. Mighty is you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you for the Holy Spirit for the work that you're doing in us. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. We worship you, God. We welcome you this time. Holy Spirit, walk through us. Even as we receive of your word, Holy Spirit, open our hearts, open our minds, oh God. Let us be tuned to you. Holy Spirit, do your work in each one of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your goodness. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, our topic, our topic is uh, the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelism. And I want to right away just first read the last two verses, verse uh, 11 and 12 of Luke chapter 12, verse 11 and 12 says, and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, be not anxious how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall answer. For the Holy Spirit shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Now, verse 11, I want us to underline, or if you have an highlighter, underline the, 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 the statement, be not anxious how or what. Be not anxious how or what thing you shall answer or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Uh, the role of the Holy Spirit in evangelism. Now, we have heard of the word evangelism. Many of us have heard of that word. Many of us have even taken part in evangelism. But I want us to, to know what really is evangelism. I want us to redefine evangelism. What exactly is evangelism? Evangelism, most people know it as just... Uh, telling someone about Jesus, but it's not necessarily that. What is evangelism? I want us to look at it from a deeper perspective, what evangelism is. Evangelism has to do with deploying any and every scriptural strategy that ends up enthroning Christ in the hearts of men. So evangelism has to do with deploying. Yes? Hello? I hope I'm being heard. Yes, yes, yes. We can, we hear, we can hear. Okay. All right. So evangelism has to do with deploying any and every scriptural strategy that will end up revealing, if you want to add, and if enthroned in the hearts of men. I repeat, I'm thinking now of breakfast. There is some uh, destruction of noise. May God help us. Evangelism, like I said, it has to do with deploying any and every scriptural strategy that will end up revealing that end up revealing and also will end up enthroning in the hearts of men uh, Christ. That will end up enthroning Christ in the hearts of men and also revealing Christ to men. That is evangelism. That is called evangelism. So evangelism is not limited to only preaching. Evangelism is not limited to, to trucks, sharing trucks. In fact, the days that we are living in right now, 
Conventional evangelism, evangelism has been has been now threatened by by the status quo or by the new norm that we have. So the dynamics okay, have really changed. Like, there, there are a few uh, nations today, or few countries, or or few territories today where you can be given uh, permission to. To, to, to put people in crusades, in outdoor gathering, and preach. But there are other places where you cannot even be given such a permission to, to do that kind of uh, uh, outdoor ministry. So the question is now, what then is the strategy? What is a strategy? Jesus was preaching and teaching, and he said, Go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. Now, then, after what he says, preach, preach this gospel in all creation, to all creation. He told us what to do which is go. Then he told us to go and preach, to declare, to proclaim. He also told us where, he told us when to go. So he told us where to go, that is to go to the world, all the world. He told us when to go, that is now. He says now. But there's one thing he never told us. He never told us how to do it. The how was left to our creativity and the civilization that we find ourselves in. Please, I want us to listen carefully. Jesus told us what to do. He told us when to do it. He told us where to do it, but he never told us how to do it because we will have to depend on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit as civilization to invent an effective strategy that will be able to make that to happen. Is God speaking to us? So, the, the how is flexible. The message will always, the message will not change, but there has to be flexibility to how, to our approach. There has to be flexibility to the approach we give in and our ability to wait with the Holy Spirit to allow the how that was assigned for this generation to happen. So we have to wait on the Holy Spirit. We depend on the Holy Spirit for the how. And if you look at the scripture we read, it says when you have been put, when you've been taken before the synagogue, before the rulers, it says that do not worry the how. Do not worry how or what. Do not worry how you will speak because the how is left for the spirit of God. The how. And many times as evangelists, when we don't, when we don't have the revelation of the how, then we won't uh, reach out efficiently to the unreached. Many times we are trying to use a how, a template that is inconsistent with the realities of the times. So if, if I have to depend on, uh, on, on, uh, on putting crusades or open air or filling up a, a stadium or filling up a field, it means there are people who will actually never hear the gospel. If that is, if, if, if all I do is to depend on that approach, 
But the question also is that how can Islam, respectfully speaking, how can Islam, right now Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. Islam today is the fastest growing, if you do your research, it is the fastest growing religion in Europe. And yet, we have even never seen them fill one stadium with people for a crusade. So the question is, by what strategy is that happening? Because if you look at the statistics all around the world, Islam is the fastest growing. Islam is the fastest growing religion, apparently. So yet we don't even see them having crusades. We don't, we don't see conferences. We don't see empowerment programs, yet there's a move that does not even seem to be resisted. We need to go back. We really need to go back to our how, how, how. You see, we miss, we, 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 there is something that is missing. We could have missed a very powerful instruction somewhere because he didn't say, Go yet. He said, pray. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. Now, the question I'm asking, who is the Lord of the harvest? And, 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 and what does it mean? Who is this Lord of the harvest? Lord means owner. The one who is in charge of the program, the one who is in charge of this program, the Lord of the harvest, he's in charge. So there was one who was put in charge of this program called evangelism. There was one who is in charge of, uh, of this program of, of, of the harvest of the field. He said, pray that he will send laborers, not for laborers. He said, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers because when he sends, he sends laborers with a strategy. Now, this was the secret behind Joshua's conquest. When Joshua got to Jericho, he did not assume that because there were prior victories, I mean, for every new battle, there was a strategy. Every new battle, there was a strategy. And Joshua knew that. And when he got there at Jericho, there was the strategy. So the men... The men were, 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 were not circumcised. There, were, there was no conse consecration. So there cannot be that encounter. And then he himself said that, that first we need to cut off the first skins of all the men. That was what happened. And after that uh, circumcision, the next thing was that we hear of a stranger came and said, I am ready to partner with you. Now, who are you? Because God told him, no man will be able to stand against you. A strategy for this battle. Here is a strategy. You can kill everybody one by one. That strategy worked in another battle. Joshua, that strategy worked in another battle of killing people one by one. But now it is not one by one strategy. There is a strategy that will bring the whole system down, the whole system of Jericho down. Did you not read, did you not read in your Bible that Babylon, the great is falling? It says in one hour, one hour. Did you ever ask yourself, what strategy brings down uh, that kind of system, that formidable system? The Bible says Jericho was shut. Nothing could come in and nothing could go out. 
What a system. What a system. Imagine five chariots would stand in the fence of Jericho, on the wall of Jericho. So how do you penetrate such a system? Rehab lived in the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho was wide enough to be a house. It would have been a fatal battle for the nation of Israel to have tried to fight directly, one by one, like they did in the other battles. So, if you study the, the, the security of Jericho, if you study the architecture and see how powerful it was, listen, the spies entered and interacted with Rehab. Within a very short time, the report had gotten to the king with the precision as to who came in. Now, how do you defeat that kind of place? How? How do you start defeating that kind of place? So, if you think you will defeat a world with a command of social media where there are many voices, where there is a large orientation in social media, we must return to the Lord of the harvest. There is the Lord of the harvest. The first, the first strategy of evangelism is not going. The first strategy of evangelism is prayer. Lord of the harvest, we are limited until you come and give us this blueprint. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. How does he train people to walk faster? By saying, you tarry. Tarry. It's in, it's in our Bibles. How did he make the early church effective in Acts? He said, tarry, tarry. So in your waiting, you are faster. Every time God says wait, he only made your journey faster. These people tarried in the upper room. Till the Lord says, wait until, until the Holy Spirit comes, the Lord of the harvest comes, be poured on you people until he comes because he is the master. He is the Lord of the harvest. Tarry. They might have looked at it as waiting is not easy. Yes, waiting is not easy. But when God tells you to wait, he's only making your journey quicker or faster. It's a mystery that when God says wait, it's a mystery when God says tarry. It's, it's, it's a sacred cord. It's a sacred cord in the kingdom of God. He's saying, when he says, wait, when he says, tarry, he's, in other words, he's saying, I have moved you 10 years. I have moved you 15 years already. But because the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, you may think all you are doing is just prayer, prayer, prayer. Because these people in the upper room, they were in prayer. The prayer of 50 days in one day brought 3,000 souls to the Lord. When the Lord of the harvest came on the day of Pentecost, hey, he, he, he announced his coming with power and great grace. In one encounter, 3,000 people were saved. Hallelujah. Klaba du salaba. In one encounter, they waited in prayer for 50 days. Let me tell you this. The real prayer point in this season is not God, give me tea and bread. He will. The real prayer point is not not God, make me famous. The real prayer point that commands the attention of heaven today is not, oh God, let me rise greater than every clergy. Let me rise greater than every evangelist. Let me rise greater than every pastor. Let me rise greater than every missionary. Let me be the man of God that everybody knows. That is nonsense. That is, not, that is not prayer that is consistent with the heart of God. The real prayer is 
Lord, reintroduce us to the Lord of the harvest. There is, there is something about him that we do not know. The Lord of the harvest, the spirit of truth himself is the Lord of the harvest. Now, how in the world do you plan to evangelize the globe and yet not know him who? The Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest is not the father. The Lord of the harvest is not the son. The son is the cause of the harvest. But wait, until you meet the Lord of the harvest. Oh, Makla Baraba. There's a song that says, Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of the sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the living God. Everyone who, who was to be used as a witness for this world evangelism, evangelism, everyone, the first thing that happened was that that person was introduced to the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest. Brethren, I hand you over to the Lord of the harvest. I hand you over to the Lord of the harvest. So he comes and he begins to teach you. He comes and he begins to guide you. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will reprove the world. Who will do the reproving? You don't have the power. Each one of us here, we don't have the power in ourselves to reprove an arrogant world. We don't have the power to convince an arrogant world. The disciples tried it. It did not work. It never worked. They tried it several times and it failed. Peter himself, who did not have the strength, he had seen miracles, but he denied Jesus. When the witness denies Jesus, what then happens to the one to be witnessed? But... When the spirit of truth came, the Bible says a shadow was healing the sick. A shadow was healing the sick. Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from their bodies. Look at, look at, look at, look at those timid individuals. When, when Jesus was arrested, only John and the beloved remained and Mary. The rest ran away. They, 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 they saw power, but they had not met the Lord of the harvest. Peter had to deny Jesus. Oh my God. But when the Lord of the harvest came in power, he did not come to a people who were loitering around. He came to a people who were tired. He came to a people who were tarrying, they didn't just tarry for one day. They tarried for 50 days, 40 days of lecture, 10 days of extra waiting, and then he came. The Bible says now, when the day of Pentecost was, was, was fully come, oh, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Peter saw them, when Peter saw them, People were saying that these people were drunk, calling them drunkards. Peter went to them 
and said, "This men were, 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 these men were not drunk. Peter said, no, they are not drunk. This is that, this is this. And, it, and, and that was the beginning of Peter's sermon. And Peter, with a mastery of a well-mastered, well-mentored well student, well-discipled, he began from Prophet Joel down to the psalmist. And he said, that same Jesus that you have crucified, Today, he has been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says they were cut to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins. And then you shall receive the gift of the promise. For the promise is unto you and your children and to your children's children as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the Bible says 3,000 came to the Lord. As a result of that, Peter speaking and explaining things fresh from the presence, fresh from the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. He made a speech and there is a 3,000 came to the Lord. Oh my God. Oh my God. While evangelization is not just moving from house to house to knock, to tell people you are a sinner, repent. Eh? You are a sinner. If you don't repent, you're going to hell straight. I'm telling you, they will arrest you. They might jail you and even kill you in some places. You will die early and you will not even be persecution. You will be the death of a fool. There has to be a receiving of a how from heaven. Listen, our victory in this world is not from our oratory skills. Let me tell you, we think ministry and world evangelization will happen just because we speak English, just because we went to school. No, sir. Listen, there has to be another strategy. Hmm? Our assignment on the, on, the, on the place of intercession and prayer is to wait until he comes and he comes with our how. So, For example, for you, he can come and say, my strategy for your efficiency as a witness is go around Jericho seven times. And while you are going around it, it does not make sense. Do you know why? I am, I am telling you, the natural mind the kind of mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. The, the things of the spirit seem to be foolishness. God's ways don't seem foolish to the world, but yet it is power. His instructions is how. Don't look like it. Because imagine marching around a wall seven times. Just, just marching around around a wall and then we will defeat the battle just like that yes it's a new strategy it's not like the old strategy where you've been killing people now where you've been doing one on one door to door he's giving you now a new strategy I'm telling you many years ago the Lord told me the Lord gave me a strategy of, uh, of, of doing ministry using social media. I decided to dedicate all my social media accounts strictly for preaching the gospel. And I've been doing ministry on Facebook. I do ministry on Twitter. I do ministry. Even my WhatsApp status, it has to be ministry. All round, I am telling you, I've been doing this for quite a long time. 
evangelizing on Facebook. Uh, and there are people who have always followed me on Facebook. And one time, someone inboxed me, not one, there are about four people, but in different days, someone in inboxed me and tells me, you know, I have been struggling with alcohol, addiction of alcohol, but at the same time, I've been following your course. I've been following you and learning a lot, but I have come to a point where now I am tired and I need this gospel because the gospel you've been preaching has, has really touched me. I want to quit alcohol and I want to get saved and I want you to pray for me. This is a person I have never met. But the person follows me on Facebook. I had to make arrangements and meet the person and pray for the person and lead them to Christ. He's not only one. There are several others who have been in box me. There are people who got saved through my Facebook evangelization, my Facebook ministry. And, and I am glad it, it has worked. It has worked. Then, uh, for many believers, many believers don't understand the dynamics of prayer, nor the superior power that is invested in the ministry of strategic prayer with understanding. You don't pray till you are tired. You pray with the goal of receiving how. The saints triumph in time past because they would stay with God in his presence. They would stay with God in prayer. Should I pursue God? God, should I pursue? Lord, what should I do? They will remain there until the, the how comes. Can I tell you, the how is a trigger. When you receive it, it comes with power. It's shut up in your bones. You cannot be silent. Calabra, the, the, listen, there are, there are businessmen who have not received the how to do kingdom business that beats Babylon to his knees. So we, so we end up going by secular invasions, trying to use a cart to carry the act. And we meet many casualties on the way. God's end time agenda is to reach the nations through this twofold witness of the gospel and throwing Christ in the hearts of men and bringing to our excellence and the dexterity of our results. The mindset, the value systems of the kingdom across territories. So, if we fail in this, we are not effective witnesses. And our assignment is not just thank God for secular formulas, but you must know that secular formulas will produce secular results. Therefore, we need to go back and say, Lord, you are the Lord of the harvest. And how will this happen? And he says to you, you are going to have a bank and the name of the bank will be this and that. And I will place an anointing on your bank and you will bank with kings and, and you will stand up and open a bank and people, everybody will say, indeed, you're a banker. They are right to say you're a banker, but they're also wrong. You're a banker who is executing banking as the how for your witness. Now, now that banking, in that banking, you will see that in that banking is, 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 is the mandate to reach the captains of, the, of that particular industry who will not come to an evangelist they perceive to be poor. So God gives you the royalty and regalia of the place so that you can reach them. You can reach the unreached. For someone, your investment 
for someone, your investment is the assignment is in the how you'll get it from the how. The question is, can your assignment or can your investment can 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 your how as in how can you how can you make your investment or your 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 your, your channel of your, or your business or whatever you're doing with the how for the for the witness how can be, how can it be an investment of tremendous healing power of God upon the lives? Because you may not even have the excellency of speech. Now, to some, to some people, actually, what God can do is to, is to just pour in you that 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 ability that that power to heal because at some point you may not even be able to preach in some places to speak in some places but the spirit will require the demonstration of power so you realize that just by speaking to uh to some people they will not listen some categories of people will not just listen when you speak to them but God, because of that, will honor you with a demonstration of the spirit in a way that uh, downforms principalities. Now, if you have received your how, after you have received your how, it's time to go. So you get to a place and say, good morning and someone gets up from a wheelchair for you just saying good morning good afternoon and someone with a blind eye gets healed someone with a sickness gets healed you say good night etc and when you leave that particular place people will will, will want to follow you all men seek for jesus now in the simplicity of your heart you can tell them i came with a simple message Jesus saves, Jesus heals. How could they deny it when your evidence was standing right in front of you? Listen, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 21. Acts, uh, I want us to go there. There's this story of uh, the man, the, the Acts chapter 3. The, the story of the... Acts chapter 3, uh, the gentleman who was at the gate called Beautiful, the man who was uh, born lame at the gate called Beautiful. Remember, the apostles went there, and the man was begging. And the Bible, you see this, uh, the word, the, the, the name of the gate, Beautiful, in the Hebrew, that the, 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 the Hebrew word for beautiful is, uh, is actually means miracle. And so this man was sitting at such a gate, but no one had the revelation. And so the apostles come and find this lame man seated there. And they pray for him. When he was asking for money, they said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, what we have, we give you. Rise up and walk. And the man rose up walked, limped, and now in verse 21, verse 21, uh, ah, verse 21, where I was, look, I was looking for this scripture, whom, says, whom the heavens must receive. Uh -huh. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of uh, restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the age began. Uh, this was uh, this was this was uh, the apostles explaining 
uh, explaining the message. So, so uh, they could not, the, the people were brought before, uh, the apostles were brought before uh, the authorities, but you see, they had to defend because there was evidence. There is a way the people could not deny this because the man was standing right there in their presence. So when you say God sent me to build a bank and they look at you and say, you, you see, you, you are now a very carnal person, you have become carnal. Instead of preaching, you are now building a bank. God says to you, don't worry, your evidence will soon be standing in front of you. So there, there are many people who do not receive that how. They do not even meet the Lord of the harvest. And then they start up ministries, they start up churches, and then people come in and then they, 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 uh, they say, the Lord sent me to transform your life. Five years down the road, 10 years down the road, people are not changed. People are not impacted. Instead, spiritually, they're just going down and down and down. They didn't meet the Lord of the harvest. Now, it is important that the Lord of the harvest, the spirit of truth, who gives us the ability to be witnesses and the heart, when it comes, when it comes, everything changes. When we meet him, everything changes. The Bible says in, in, uh, the Bible says in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses. So before becoming witness, you start by the place of having an encounter with the Lord of the harvest, having an encounter with the Spirit who comes with power. Then from there, you become now a witness. You, you go to be a witness. You can't be a witness without first end having an encounter with the Lord of the harvest, having an encounter with the Holy Spirit because he is the master of the harvest. He is the master of evangelism. Praise the Lord. You see, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, is it verse 31? Acts chapter 4, verse 31, says, And when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hey, Lakrata Bala. Look at the look at the protocol of things. Prayer first, then they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the harvest, then they spoke the word with boldness. Boldness. That's the same boldness that Peter spoke with the word of God on that day of the Pentecost. And we still see the trend coming. And we see that after the, the apostles had the the encounter of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, their ministry was not the same. Their ministry went to another level. They started experiencing strange dimension, strange move of the Holy Ghost differently. I remember one time, I was uh, in 2000, uh, in 2014, I'd, I was doing a, uh, we are doing a door to door evangelism in town, in some town. And so uh, I, I was divided in some group. I was in some group. So the group I was going with, people said, no, let us go and start with the town itself where there are many people. Me, I'm saying, no, there's a, it's like this is, there's a saloon here. And this saloon looks a new saloon that has been op open. But some people are saying, no, people are, not, people are not too many there. We need to go and start from where people are many. I said, no, I insisted. So we went to that saloon. I have never been in that saloon. I don't know that saloon. I don't know people who work in that saloon. So uh, next to the door, there was a barber working on a client. 
and then there was another person who was seated. Then there was another uh, person who was seated at the extreme end of the room. So me, I entered. We, we entered when we entered. In, I entered, and I just spoke, mentioned a name, the surname and the Christian name of someone. I just spoke it. I didn't know who it was, but I just mentioned the name. And because others went to this, uh, other, other people now went to talk to these others. Yeah, I went to the extreme person who was seated at the extreme end of the room. I went directly to him. So when I was going to him, the man was looking at me while smiling. And I'm wondering what is wrong. So I reached there. I start preaching, the man is smiling. I'm preaching to him, he's just smiling and smiling. I finished preaching and now I started telling him now, uh, what do you have to say? What is your response? This word you've heard. The man smiles and shakes his head. And he said, me, from the, he said, first of all, I don't know you. You don't know me. I have never seen you. You have never seen me. But the moment you entered and mentioned my name, you ended mentioning my full names, I just knew God has come for me. God has come for me. And immediately, he, he, he said, now, this is his time, his time to get saved. This was his time to get saved. So he said, he said, we're just waiting for me to finish. And I was telling him, why did you tell me earlier? So that we just cut the long story short. And we just, he said, we just waiting. he knew it was his day. Now, the question is, people were asking me, how did they know? How, I also didn't know this. I've never met him. But the spirit just gave me the, the name. This man told me he has always chased people who come to preach. He has, he has always had to preach, but he always chased them. In fact, he hates people who, who preach. But this time, that means if I'd come in a, in a normal strategy, ordinary strategy, this man was still going to reject or send me away. But you see what happened? And he was the first person to get saved in that shop. And uh, so it's important that we be, we, we work along with the Lord of the harvest because he gives you the how, he guides you what to, how and what to say. I remember in 2013, I was doing mission in Butere Diocese. And uh, at this particular time, they told us to, they, they told us to go for pastoral visits in homes of people, Christians who have taken long without going to church. So I go to uh, the, 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 the lay readers who are translating me, took me to a home of, of retired civil servants, a retired civil servant. This man built two houses in his compound. One house is the one who stays in it, Another house, it is his wife that stays in it. And we went to the first house where his wife was. We talked to the wife. We said we have come to share the word of God and maybe find out what has really been putting you down that you can't attend the church. He said, ah, for him, he has always had the word. So he has enough. She doesn't need the word. So we said, okay, any prayer requests, any prayer point you want us to stand with you in prayer? He said he doesn't have any prayer requests. So we said, okay, where is your husband? He said, the husband is in his house. So we should go there. We went to the house where the husband was. The husband was blind because the, the, the lady that told me the moment we entered the house that this man is blind. He cannot see. Pastor, first pray for his eyes to open because he will not listen. He will not listen to the gospel. First pray for his eyes to open. Now, these guys have put too much faith in me, yet me in my life, I know I have never prayed for a blind eye to open. I have even never done that ministry. So I was saying now, blind, I have never done that. But I acted cool. I didn't want to show them I have never. But they were putting me on pressure. And worst of all, when the man was listening, I said, now, nah, I wish they had told me before, before we entered. But now they're telling me now I have to make a decision right in front of this blind man. So immediately I, I had to listen to the Holy Spirit. I was connected in the Spirit. And the Spirit told me, 
Just teach the word. Don't even preach. Teach the word. Oh. Self, he told me three times. Teach the word. So I looked at these people. I said, now. This, these people, they are going to hate me, but let me teach the word. I started teaching the word. Teaching the word by revelation. I didn't have a sermon. I didn't have a track. But I was teaching as the spirit gives me utterance. Teaching by revelation. And, and while I was teaching, this man who started looking, listening to, looking at me with his ears, he was looking at me with his ears. He started turning the head slowly, slowly, slowly. And started looking at me while nodding the head, but the eyes, both eyes are closed, nodding the head. So a time came, I, I taught like for, for coming close to two hours. And we are all deep in the spirit. We're all high in the spirit. And me, I was so moved by the spirit. So all of a sudden, this man stops me and says, wait, you people, I have just realized that I have been seen. We were shocked. We, we, we asked him, at what point did you start seeing? At what point? Did you start seeing now? What point? He said, he also doesn't know. He, he realized he has been seen. How it happened? At what point it happened? He doesn't understand. But he realized actually that he's, he, he, he has been seen. Now, I said, God. I didn't want to act as though I am surprised, really. So, I didn't know that it was going to happen. I had to keep myself calm. And so this man immediately went. He was very happy, excited. He went to his bedroom, got a very old, big Bible full of dust, started dusting it and said, now I'm even going to read the word of God. We gave him a scripture and read it for us aloud. And the, the, why the man was so excited, just started shouting and we were, everyone was excited. Let me tell you, the wife came from nowhere, I don't know. The wife came, when they realized that he saw that the, the husband was seeing. The wife started asking, asking me to pray for her, to do what, and she brought many children, I don't know from where, because by the time you entered there, there were no children, but he brought many children. And I was wondering, what happened? He said, I pray for this child, I pray for this one, I pray for this one. This is a lady who said she didn't have a prayer request. So the man who, who, whom God opened his eyes, he said, I am going to organize a crusade in this community of mine. And I want everyone to hear the gospel that opens blind eyes. Immediately started calling people in town to bring machines, to bring, they started hiring and organized a crusade there and testified and we preached the gospel somehow. Many people got saved that very day, that very evening. That night, I did not sleep because this was a strange happening. I asked God, what, how did it happen? God told me his word carries enough power. Enough power. His word has enough power in itself to heal and to deliver. So from that day, I learned a lesson to really, to really know the how. God taught me a lot of things regarding uh, the role of the Holy Spirit while in evangelism, because you will, you will, you will, you will be so efficient, and the results will be amazing. When he gives you the how, he's always speaking, but most times we're not always hearing because we go when we have cramped. We go religiously. We go when we're using old experiences. We go when we are using old approaches, old strategy. We want to fight battles, new battles with old strategies, but every battle is new. There's even a home I went to and they, 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 they told me that the couple had stayed for eight months without going to church. And they had because of problems. So I asked them, what is the biggest problem? And they told me their biggest problem. And uh, I told them, okay, the, the, Lord, the Lord just told me that uh, 
the Lord just told me to not to preach the word and not to teach the word, but to prophesy. And immediately the Lord, the Spirit of God gave me the prophecy. And I prophesied to their lives. I prophesied to their lives and they were all touched, though they despised me because I didn't pray, I didn't preach, and they looked at me as somebody who is just, but the Spirit told me that when you preach, they will not. But the prophecy that I gave them, three weeks after I'd come back to Uganda, the very same people called me, they looked for me, they called me, they called the mission coordinator of the Diocese of Butere, they went there, the diocese, and asked the, the mission coordinator to uh, for my number, so the mission coordinator told me that there are Christians who have been desperately looking for you, for your number. Okay? They have been desperately looking for your number. So uh, can I give them? So I said, yes. So they told me, they, they told me what happened. It, they told me exactly what I told them has come to pass. And they were happy. So in 2019, I went back there and I found them serving in the church. They are older people, but they were serving. They are about uh, 70, 60 but they were serving seriously in the church. And uh, that is the power. So God can use in different dimensions by the spirit, the Lord of the harvest, depending on, uh, on the how, the how. We must always pay attention to the how. Never, uh, we should never go for ministry or evangelism without first seeking God the how. Many of us have been part of the organizers of evangelism missions, but always take more time to pray. Always take more time to pray. Wait upon the Lord, because the waiting there is the fastest way to run, is the fastest way to achieve results, is the fastest way, is, is, is a quickening way. So the Bible says that it's the same spirit, the spirit that will quicken our mortal bodies. Is a quickening spirit, at the same time the spirit that gives life. So, brethren, I can share a lot about the role of the spirit, but the most important when it comes to evangelism is the how, and that how is from the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the harvest, the spirit of truth. Hear him, hear him, tune to him, set your mind on him, focus on him, wait upon him. Praise the Lord. Let us pray, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, thank you for your goodness, thank you for your word. I bless your name because you have manifested your name on this earth, in our lives, oh God. I pray that whoever has listened to this gospel, whoever has listened to this message, God, touch them wherever they are and speak to them. Anything that has been hindering them from hearing your word, anything that has been preventing us from hearing the Holy Spirit, God, remove it out of our lives. In the name of Jesus, remove it, Lord, and clear our minds. Give us ears that listen, eyes that see. Lord, we pray that you will be able to tell each one of us the how, the how, because you called us for the work of the ministry. You called us, you called each one of us, every one of us, for the work of the ministry. Father, we ask you by your spirit, to tell us the how, the how in the different ministries, in the different battles, in the different challenges, give us the how that we will not operate carnally, we will not operate according to the standards of the world. Fill our minds, oh God, fill our minds. And I'm praying, Lord, for somebody who's listening, who has been struggling with the direction, not having a clear direction in ministry, in the business world, in the work, Father, pray by your spirit, Holy Spirit, 
Give them direction. Give them direction that even tonight someone will dream a dream, a vision with a direction. You will speak to them. Father, you will speak to them. You will show them the how. You will show them the strategy. You will show them how to make it. You will show them, God, how to break through, how to break through, how to break through. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Okay, let us pray. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay, let us respond in prayer. Um, first, let's thank God for this word that has come for us this evening. I want to remind us to come back to the place of prayer in order for us to 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 to, to win the souls of men. Father in heaven, we, we thank you for your word. Your word in Isaiah 55 reminds us that your word does not return to you void, but it accomplishes the purposes to which you've sent it for. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this word, the word that you've sent us this evening. We receive it, Lord, with thanksgiving. We receive it, Lord, with thanksgiving. Oh, Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your servant, Reverend Ben, that you've used to speak to us, Lord. We thank you. Your word says that those who water others are watered themselves. Lord, we pray that as he's emptied himself for us, we pray that, Lord, you will water him. You'll refill him. You'll, you'll bless him for this word that he has released to us. You will bless him, bless his ministry, bless his family, and you'll protect him and, and, and guard him from every powers of darkness. So, Father, that would arise because of this word that he has released to us. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Yes, uh, let us continue to pray. First, let's bring repentance for ourselves, but also as the church, where we have been so rigid uh, to, 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 to the same approach. And, and we've not strategized, we've not come back to the, to the Lord of the harvest, to us. We've spent less time in prayer and we have run so many activities. Uh, last week, I, I read the word of uh, King Solomon and he was building the temple. And, uh, God, you know, God told him concerning this temple you're building, walk in my ways, in my statutes. It brought, in that devotion, it brought a lot of how many activities we're involved in. But are we walking in God's statutes? Are we having this time, as, as we've been exhorted, to spend time in and, and to ask the how? We are going out for evangelism, but... Have we asked the how? So let's bring repentance for even ourselves, how we've run the different aspects, be it in our families, the souls we've not won, marriages. Let us pray. Let us ask God to forgive us. Father in heaven, we continue to come before you. Forgive us, Lord. We ask for forgiveness. Because we have worked in our wisdom, we have worked in our academics, we've worked in what we know. And Lord, we have lost you. We have not won souls for you. There are souls in our families that are perishing in sin. There are souls in our communities, souls that are workplaces, souls wherever you've placed us. Lord, even when we've gone out for evangelism, we are not winning souls. We are using, the, we, we are using our natural man saying there are many people here, like the testimony Reverend has given us. If he had gone with the people who said there are so many people there and he has missed out that soul in the salon, Lord, it would not be good for you. It would not please you. So forgive us, Lord, as the church, as ourselves, as individuals. Lord, forgive us and have mercy when we've not sought for your direction, when we have not tarried in your presence. Father, we have walked out with all... We, we want fame, we want, but Lord, we have not prayed. We have not spent time in your presence to ask the how. Forgive us and have mercy. We have failed you. 
We acknowledge our sin before you and ask that you forgive us and cleanse us, Lord, from all sin and unrighteousness, from everything that blocks us to even spend time in your presence, to ask, to seek for guidance. Forgive us and have mercy. The other world, the wicked world, they seek for direction. We remember when the king Nebuchadnezzar came to, to take the children of Israel into captivity. The word of God says he stood at the path where there are two ways. And he sought of his gods for how he would come against the Israelites. But Father, for us, we have just moved. Actually, those who have spent time in prayer, we have fought against them. Lord, we ask that you'll forgive us and have mercy. We have spoken ill of those who are spending time in prayer. Lord, we have said, no, it is going to delay and we just want to rush. And Lord, we have been hit at and we have brought your name to shame. May you forgive us and have mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, this evening. Cleanse us with your precious blood. And Lord, we pray that as you cleanse us, help us to come back to that place of prayer. As you've given us, the apostles, they spent time in prayer and they, they, they your word moved the spirit of the Lord. You moved marvelously. There are 3,000 souls that were born in just one day because there was a prayer that took place before spending time in the harvest. Forgive us and have mercy. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. And this day we pray that you renew us. You take out the stony hearts that have rebelled against you, the Lord of the harvest, and give us hearts of flesh that walk with you, stay in step with you, not to rush and crash, not to slow and miss you, but in step with you. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue to pray, to come back for strategies, to come back to the place of prayer, that this evening, that the, the, the God will pour unto us the spirit of prayer and supplication, the spirit of reading his word, because when we are filled with his word, that we can pray. So let us ask God to fill us, to, to give us hunger for his word and prayer and keeping and tearing, waiting upon him so that we shall not move unless we have known this is what the Lord wants. This is the direction we are taking in every aspect, be it business, be it parenting, be it marriages, be it anything, ministry, whatever the Lord has called us for. Let us pray that beginning this evening, there are things that will be sorted out in our lives so that because we are walking in step with the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we continue to come before you. We ask that you help us, pour unto us the spirit of prayer and supplication, pour unto us the hunger, the hunger for your word, so that we, because it, the sword of the spirit is the word of God, so that we'll pray, we'll pray and we shall tarry in your presence. We pray that, Lord, you, you will, in the name of Jesus, we come against every powers of darkness that have been resisting us to tarry in your presence. The, 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 the things of the world that have taken us up, Lord, we pray that you bring us back to this place of prayer that will be filled with power as we wait upon you that lord when we move out it will be the spirit of god to have vest the souls for your kingdom father we pray that you give us the spirit of prayer and supplication that this evening let the things let let let, let ministry in us lord begin to move and uproot things that have been taking us away from your presence. That, Lord, from this night we shall decide to do things according to your way, to do things after we have sought you, to do to walk in step with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray that for the church, that we shelter in the presence of God, that... We shall not do things religiously, but the spirit of the Lord will be poured out in the church. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We first ask for forgiveness as a church where we have, we are, where we have used the same strategies. We are reminded of uh, Samson when he fought with the 
Philistines. He threw away the jawbone because God, you, you're God of strategy. Lord, we ask that you forgive us when we've kept the same jawbone. We fought different battles, but with the same strategy. And we have lost and we brought shame to your name. Father, we ask that this day as the church, as we have gathered this evening, that, Lord, you will start to minister to us. You will pour out your spirit upon the church, that, Lord, we shall meet you. With, there will be that encounter with you. That, Lord, we shall do things in, in, in your way, with your strategy, for the different battles, for the different attacks that church has. That, Lord, this evening, we shall have a different sense of how things move in your kingdom, according to kingdom business, according to kingdom ways, not religious ways, not denominational, but Lord, according to your kingdom, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we give you praise, and we pray that, Lord, you will bless us even as we live, that from this day forth, things will be different in our lives. We pray for new beginnings, new ways, a new relationship with the Holy Spirit. Dig us deeper into that place of relating with the Holy Spirit because he's the Lord of the harvest. There is no way we can work, do his work without him. So we pray that there will be a fresh outpouring upon us in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We worship you. We give you praise. We lift your name high, Father. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.